All right, I'm back. This is Ryder Regatta coming to you live from the Hangar Billies and Sports Lounge. We're here at 121 Scurfield Boulevard, and we're here for a 14-1 straight pool demonstration exhibition match. Uh, it's a matchup between Hanyu and myself. We missed a lot of this already. Uh, he's at 44, so he's six points away from winning. I'm at four points. Uh, my back's against the wall. So what we're going to do, I've been trying to get this uh, stream going again, and so I just got it going now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play another race to 50 after this is done here, and then that will be at, regardless of whatever the score is. But he's, he's slaughtering me right now, 44 to 4. I'll be back. Ran into the ball and froze up. Like, not much I can do about it. Alright, so 45 to 12. He needs five balls. I need uh, 35, 38. I need 38. He should get out here, though, as long as he gets an opening here after break. And we're going to do another race to 50 after this, just to um, have a fresh start. Plus, it kind of gave me a little bit of a chance to warm up, so it's not too bad. Yeah, make the ball, so 45, my turn. 
And all I gotta do is do a 38 point run and we're good. I'll be back. They're just, they're just going over the rules a little bit. So another one of the rules that they have is when you're in the, when you're at the finish in the pack, um, if, if the last ball is inside where the triangle goes when you re-rack, then that, then what happens with the last ball is it just gets put back into a rack and you go back to the original break with the same rule where you got to have two balls hit a rail plus the cue balls hit a rail. Now, if the cue ball ends up being inside the diamond or inside the whether you rack the balls, um, then you end up getting a ball in hand behind the line, so uh, or on the line, I should say, on the string. Um, and some people will do that for the purpose of just trying to um, uh, get a ball in hand with a better angle for the breakup ball when you have a ball, say, sitting on the on the rail on one of the top cushions. Right. That's one of the points where you would need that. I think he's already got his fine ball. The play is going to be out now. But we're going to play our fresh one after this. Oh, and I have two balls, so we'll make it official so I don't look that bad. That's 50, right? Yeah. So you can break first this time. 
All right, so Hanyu wins that one. 50 to 14. I'll make it official here. Okay, and now we're going to do a fresh one with hopefully no internet disruptions. So that way you guys get a chance to see the game played. The whole idea behind streaming it is for two reasons. One, I want viewers and players to understand about the rules of the game. Uh, two, I want people, uh, viewers and players to be able to have a feel for what a match looks like on a bar box when it comes to straight pool. Thanks uh, to real hit. He's going to turn the table over. It'll be my turn to go. Oh, and I'm going to change this here, too. I forgot my uh, mouse at home, so everything I'm doing it through the keyboard mouse, and it's a little bit annoying. In a second here, I'm just adjusting the camera quickly. It's a little better. All right, it's my turn to go. Trying to lock them up while I open up the balls a little bit more. Well, I'm off to a good start in this uh, rack, I guess, because I'm up one nothing. <laughs> well, that's why I lost 50 to 14, so it wasn't very pretty. Safety battle at first, because nobody wants to give anybody a chance at the table, right? I'll be back. Played the shot of the two way, ended up making it. 
just bad luck sometimes. Got to figure out how to need the recovery there. Literally taking this rack out one at a time, man, and haven't really had a shot that's worked for me yet. But I think a lot of it was because I was kind of playing the two-way shot, right? I was trying to make sure that if I didn't make it, that I didn't give him anything. So I was also giving myself nothing. <laughs> so I got I to gotta figure out what, what to do here. There's a different way of playing this game. I know that. I can't figure it out yet. The patterns haven't worked for me yet. You missed that shot. Uh, four, six, nine. Also, three, three. There's nine on the table. Six balls off. Three, three. Three, three, right?
he said that we could use he said we could use a rack to see whether the ball come in there or not. And I'm gonna find it. Well, I guess it's going to be back to the diamonds. Back to the ball. Back to the ball. Jump shot. Jump shot. Jump shot. Jump shot. No, oh, 11. Yeah, no, but I mean, I just made eight. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, taking my time on that one. All right, so uh, 11 for me. Starting to warm up, though. I'm starting to see it now. He's in trouble. I was in trouble the first time, but now I think he's in trouble now. Starting to get a little bit of a feel. But the problem is that he's got a really good feel, so technically I'm still in trouble. I can't believe I missed that six ball, but I was so focused on just opening up and making sure that there was someone to shoot at next. That was a little bit better, though, for sure. They didn't quite get the breakout angle here on the 15 ball, so he's got to see if that five ball goes. We can create a breakout from there. If not, he's just going to have to make this ball and then play a safety after that. Oh, he tried to force it. Made a ball by fluke. It just gets spotted. Nothing happens there. They made two. Yeah, I get spotted. We got Brian Kenischuk helping us out here with the rules. He used to be a straight pool player. I'll be back. No penalty for that either, right? Eh?
I'll mark it over here. Okay. You made two balls, yeah. Yeah, five. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's probably the hardest thing, man. I'm trying to keep track of the work. Not the little counters. Got lucky there on the leave. But keeping track of points is kind of like where the challenge is at in this game, really. But normally they have uh, counters for street pool built into the tables. At least the old, the old school traditional ones, anyways, from like pre '90s. All those usually had the the ticker in there. So you keep track of your street pool points. Um, the way we kind of keep track of the points nowadays is we add them by 14 points and then we always keep in mind that there's 15 balls in in the spot that's not going to hit a rail so that's going to be a foul so he yeah you minus one so the first time you foul it's just minus one the second time you foul i believe it's minus two if you do it consecutively and if you foul three times in a row it's minus 15. so i'm kind of like a three foul rule punishment but you don't really see that too often as soon as the other player pots a ball legally it resets I had the right idea, but I hit too heavy, and I think I left on the combo. Pretty sure I left on the combo. I'm looking at it right now. Oh no, it wasn't a combo. And he hit a little bit too heavy too. Alright, I'll be back.
hard, yeah. But like normally you have a counter, right? I have a scoreboard thing too, right? But it is hard to remember. It's almost like you have to have somebody like a referee keep track of points. Oh, I would kind of like this one because you know what I do? It's like, I look at how many balls are on the table and then when I'm done, it's something I'm going to do. That is going to help you a little bit. So the reason why those got re-racked is because the final ball was inside the triangle where the, where the rack goes. So because you can't rack the balls around it, it just becomes back part of the natural original rack, right? The 15 balls. Um, and then for me, what I have to do there is that I couldn't just hit a ball and hit a rail. I have to make sure that two balls hit a rail and that the cue ball hit the rail as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't have counted. Now, if the five ball in, or if the cue ball ends up going into that little area, then it's just the ball in hand on the string on the line. Three balls. All right, my turn. So that goes anywhere on the line now, the cue ball, and I lose a point because of that foul. Oh, and he missed. Went aggressive and he came up short.
Yeah. Uh, minus one, so nine. Nine points. Will that work for losing a bowl? Nine puts me at uh, 32. Eighteen away from winning this one. Scotty Gearhood, Hart, how you doing? Says, I've never understood this game. Yeah, so that's the idea of why I'm doing it, to help uh, the viewers from Q Sports Live to be able to understand more about the game, and for the people here in Winnipeg and Manitoba to understand more about the game, because I'm going to start doing more straight pool tournaments. Um, and I want to do them on the bar box, so it makes it a little bit easier for the players. And um, it's kind of like a step on to the next level, right? Because then eventually we're going to move on to the nine foots and have a championship showdown on the nine foots for a straight boom um but uh, we're a bar box town there's a lot of bar boxes so i wanted to do something that would help the players to become even more competitive here in manitoba and so straight pool is not necessarily the answer to become a pro sort of see so to speak but it will help you to understand more about your defensive game your your pattern play right because you're not just trying to run you know a couple of balls to win you're trying to run consistently more than 15 balls right so it really pushes you to, to play a different style of game, to be more competitive. And um, when you learn the skill and you understand how to play the game and you can start going on big runs, that translates into runouts when you're playing eight ball, nine ball, and 10 ball. So it's a really, really, really good game. Uh, but to start off with the game, so the rack gets racked, um, you have a stripe in the front. And then traditionally they would put a one and a five in the back corners, but now it doesn't matter anymore. But the stripe has to go in the front as a front ball. Off the break, you don't try to smash the balls open. You try to play safety. So you usually go to one of the back corner balls. You hit the edge of it, half ball maybe. And you try to make two of the balls from the rack come off the rail and then or go into the rail. And then you're also trying to get the cue ball to hit a rail. So that's the start of the game only. Right From there, it's all call shots. And um, you're basically trying to find a way to finish 14 out of the 15 balls, leaving the last ball on the table with a good angle be able to make that shot, break into the fresh pack, and continue your run. So there's a lot of skill, not just for the pattern play itself, but also the finish and the start. It's a very, very good game for you.
All right, so that's basically the object of the game. And, and then all it is is just trying to get to the X amount or number that you're supposed to get to. Um, foul rules are basically, if you foul, it's not a ball in hand. The cue ball stays where, where, so where, wherever they, it stopped. Um, your opponent doesn't get any extra points when you foul, but you lose points when you foul. So typically you lose one point on the first foul, uh, two points on the second foul consecutive. And if you happen to end up getting put in a spot where you have three consecutive fouls, then it's a 15-point deduction. Other than that, every ball is worth one point. Um, there's no uh, specific way to, like, like a ball that means more or has more value, none of that stuff. Every ball has the same value. Um, it's more or less about pattern play and just trying to, trying to work the table as best as you can with every rack that comes up. So, and now this this game typically when you when you play it it's usually played on a five by ten or a four and a half by nine and when you watch it on there like unless you're watching pro players it's kind of dry to watch right but on the bar box it makes it a little bit more entertaining because once a player gets a chance to get going they actually have a real chance to get going because this table is a little bit friendlier so now you can take long shots through the corners uh, you can do different things that normally you wouldn't do on a five by ten or four and a half by nine. And he's just trying to figure out how to get this all worked out. Nine ball give him an option to open everything up there. But got a shot on the seven and a shot on this uh, 15 ball. To make the 15, looking for the angle here on the seven ball. Could maybe take the shot on the nine ball here instead. Might be better. Uh, it was a better option, you know, taking the seven ball wouldn't really done much for him. But taking that nine ball gives him another opportunity to continue to go. And so that's that's part of the strategy of the game is trying to recognize when you're in a position where you might make a mistake and end your run. So that awareness that you create from playing straight pool becomes an awareness that you have an eight ball, nine ball, and ten ball as well. You start looking at options at the table and you start saying, well, if I play this, this is a bad shot. Um, maybe I'll play this one instead. Right, and so it, it, there's a lot of good ways that straight pool can help out your game. And it's fun, especially like on the bar boss, like I said, once you get going, you know, the, the, I did a 40 point run a couple of weeks ago just to try it out, and it was really fun, right? It's, you don't do 40 point runs on eight ball, nine ball, or 10 ball, and that would be, you know, maybe a few runouts, but when you get into a groove and you start running points and, and you really start hitting that dead stroke, you start finding focus that you normally didn't know you had. So lots of different ways how this game can help a player out. And now the main reason why I put it on here is for everyone to have an understanding because we have viewers from QSports Live that tune in to watch my streams. And I wanted you guys to be familiarized more with the rules and, and the style of play. So that way whenever you see live stream coverage from the hangar or wherever I have a tournament and it says straight pool on there. Uh, oh, I got to ask them this question because I don't know. I, I think if... The cue ball would have been on the spot. I think he still had to shoot forward. He can't, he can't shoot backwards on the line. And I'm going to go ask him because i got somebody that has experience that's played this game um, prior to, and, and so he knows the rules really well, and he's here right now giving us some assistance with trying to understand some of the small little details. So I got a question for you too, Brian. If the uh, if the player plays the cue ball, if the player plays the cue ball, and you have the ball there, or the ball is here, I'm going to run over there. Comes the big line. How do you have to play the ball?
He had no choice. He had no choice. Yeah. They had 11 point run there, putting him at 17. Or, sorry, 16. Oh, the French fry, right? We're now on a Saturday. Uh, oh. Yeah, so it's different things that we can do. I could do a scene, or I could be like in relation to be 675, um, and double in the 1850s. Okay. Else I'll be better. But I'm thinking about making the first couple of things. So people can get a little further. Happy Friday. 
maybe I can take a call too, right? Maybe like 20 bucks, I can buy something. Just to get people to get paid for it. Because the biggest part of it is having to write a shop to pay the That's right. Yeah. That's the big part of it. Yeah. But there's a lot of growth behind this. The reason why I did this is because it's going to grow. And then we'll do this again, maybe if you're up for it again, we can do it. Or otherwise, it's. Yeah, and the whole time, the only thing you're trying to do is you're trying to limit the opportunities. Right? You want to make sure that you capitalize on your safety as much as possible, which is going to help your safety game. My shot again. Forty-one. Good shape for him, almost. Try to play the six ball for the shape onto the two and the five or the four and the five, whatever it is, that's at the bottom rail here. So unfortunately for for me, I kind of get in position here because that's what I was trying to do. Uh, Dave Lintel, how you doing? It says, great game to practice solo and help with pattern play. I've been using this to try and get a level where I can compete with y'all. Honestly, the, the more you try this, the better it is, man. And it's small steps, right? Like you don't, you don't need huge runs for you to be able to like learn and, and gain from it. Um, even if you do, you know, eight point run, twenty point run, um, just challenge yourself to do more the next time, right? And just get more focus every time you're there when you're close to it. And, and that's what's going to happen. You'll make like six, seven, eight balls, and then you get to that crucial ball. And if you take your time and work it out, you continue to go. I have a tough time getting out here still.
And normally when I used to do straight pool for practicing, I would just spread the balls around off, like I'd break them, right, and spread them around and then just try to run 14 balls. And it's not the way the game is played, but it's a good way to get good practice out of your game. And, and there's less stress at the table because you're not trying to run specific balls. You're trying to run every ball on the table, right? So then you're working your best pattern for it. There was six on the table and one remaining, so that gives them five points, puts them at 21. And this is nice. He's got a nice little re-rack area. Great ball to make, an easy shot to make. Nice little angle for the breakout. Can put a lot of power into this. This could help him out. He could get into a nice little spread off the break here. Five, right? Almost made the eight ball too. Didn't quite get the result that he was looking for. You, know, you can't make the eight ball from here, so he's got to play something different. I think I'm going to do a race to 50. And like cheap entries, like 25 bucks to play, something like that. Cheap. Just for everyone here in Manitoba to get a chance to come out and try the game, have some fun, and learn about it. 22 to 41. I'll be back. It was good though, right?
exciting. No, it's so far. So, and what makes it exciting is that you see a single limitation, so then it makes the tougher to play, right? You have to play against the player. And then usually you play against high level players too. So you will see the difference so from your player, you'll go on 100 point rushing calls, right? And that's where we have to learn how to do that, right? Yeah, I think it's good.